Hi, I'm Paul Patolo, and today we're here with my good friend Jim Peterson in his Portland Art Studio. Jim, I had a couple of questions for you. Have you always lived in the Portland area? Yeah, born and bred. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I learned an interesting fact the other day that uh, Portland is the 10th largest uh, art community in the uh, country. So they say. Yeah, and I, uh, I learned that the night that we went up to. I, I also learned that Portland has every first Friday open gallery night uh, for artists. It's a fantastic thing. I've been bringing my kids for years. Uh, a lot of yeah. people don't know that the Portland Museum of Art is free every Friday night. It is. And all the studios, the first Friday of every month, open up for uh, the public to come on in and check out the art scene. It's very vibrant. Yeah, and, I, and actually I'm bringing my kids up there. I, I went the first time with you and I was amazed at how many people were out and all the galleries open and all the kinds of art that you can see. Um, and I understand too that uh, you not only paint on canvas and boards, that you painted, have painted on other objects in the past. Well, my stock and trade, uh, I'm an abstract artist yep. to begin with. Uh, well, what does that mean, abstract? Well, abstract, uh, let's take it, uh, for example, uh, a parody or however you want to put it, as a musician. Mm -hmm. You learn, maybe you learn bass guitar and you get into country or rock and roll. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. And you go through the stages and you become not better and better but more proficient at what you do and it's kind of boring to do the same thing over and over again so you want to get into a little abstract stuff or jazz yep. a fusion it's, you're creating yep. basically you you have to have your uh, essentials down yep. your perspective contour drawing line and uh, shade so it's you kind get, of an advanced part of you get your basics down like in anything else it's yep. all about basics and yep. then you can take off you know yep. i some people have been lucky enough uh, Bob Cohen from Portland, a good good guy, great guy. I was in the same art classes with him. Yep. He found what he liked back in high school. Yep. Mike Waterman, probably one of the best painters in the world that I went to school with, mm -hmm. he found kind of his niche late in high school yep. and has stayed with it. Yep. I was unlucky enough to uh, just keep going on from portraits then to yep. landscapes and then to yep. on and on and on and then... I came you're around being a, big a, little circle. Bit, a little bit modest. You're pretty well known for primitives, I understand, too. Actually, Paul, uh, it was uh, quite a little story. I was painting in my studio, and uh, a gentleman came in, I know, that's in the antique business, and asked me to recreate uh, a master, a, a classical primitive Americana yeah. piece on a box, and I did it. Wow. One thing led to the next. next new career. Year, new career. I'm painting for antique dealers all over the world. Wow. First all over New England, then all yep. over the country, and then all over the world. That's recreating amazing. antiques on antiques in yep. general. Wow, that's great. That's great. I know you're very talented. I've talked to other people around Portland, and uh, one of the things that I, I found out about you is you've been in some major publications. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been in Martha Stewart, Country Living, Victoria, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of times because uh, some of my paintings and pieces go, uh, once they leave my studio, these, I tell them what they've got, but once they leave my studio, who knows, and they, they show up quite a bit in like the main antique digest. You'll That's see amazing. a painting yeah. that went for $3,000 at a Minnesota auction of an old fish painting yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Could be anything. That's great. I understand you also do some... Uh, projects like in the Falmouth area, you've done some actually homes gone in and done oh, some yeah. different... Oh yeah, a lot of my work, uh, believe it or not, are uh, portraits of houses. Yep. Someone owns a, a nice house, an older home, and uh, they want to give it that vintage look. So if the house was built in 1753 or 1820, I'll do a portrait in that vein, mm -hmm. New England style, 1750s of that house, and age it up and find an old mm -hmm. frame and pop it in it. And a lot of times, uh, Coming up shortly for some friends of ours, the McElwains, we're painting a mural in their dining room. I was going to say, you've done whole murals on the walls? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, it could be anybody. Uh, it's, it's like anything else. If you're into cars, you can tell the difference between engines. I don't know right. uh, a 442 from a 320, yeah. but in the art world, especially I found out the last 15 years in the antique world, mm -hmm. it is. It is. New England, there's Maine, there's Mid-Atlantic yeah. States, there's Pennsylvania Dutch, there's you know, these particular themes and the way people paint it in yeah. certain areas. So um, to make a long story short, if someone gives me a piece from 1950s, I've first got to find out where it was built, or the mm -hmm. 40s or the 30s, yeah. and then also paint in that style yeah. of the 30s or the 40s yeah. or 1750s. I recently heard that you did about 40 paintings for a spring collection you have coming out. I did, Paul, and uh, thanks to some associates of mine to uh, put it together and had the foresight and uh, believed in me enough. 
they commissioned me to do uh, 40 paintings. Oh, it was quite a few. It certainly was, and it's quite a job. Yeah, different, I'm sure, different subjects. All I kinds. Uh, that's one thing, uh, I, like I say, when I, as throwback to earlier, knowing your basics, I'm able to paint realistically. Mm -hmm. I'm able to paint abstract. I'm able to paint contemporary. Right. So we chose the whole circle. We went from semi-abstract right through to... Mm -hmm. uh, butterflies and uh, some fantastic stuff. I mean, and I got to hand it to them because uh, my associates uh, picked uh, the, the uh, things to paint and I was happy. Well, I was going to ask you, where do you get your inspiration for some of these ideas and paintings that you come up with? Is it? I basically, uh, for my own stuff, it's out of my head, but when mm -hmm. it's for somebody uh, that's a commission, I've got to go to books like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. You got to do your homework. Yeah, I'm sure living in Maine gives you some great oh, subjects. Uh, oh, I mean, to begin with, to, people have been coming to Maine uh, for hundreds of years to paint, and a lot of people don't realize it's the light. It's mm -hmm. the light. Maine has a particular light, and certain artists, and I'm one of them, love that light, and that, mm -hmm. it has drawn artists from all over the world for a couple hundred years at least. One of the things, like I say, you've been a little bit modest, Jim. The night that I went up to the art galleries, I was talking to some other people, local artists, and you have kind of a niche that we talked about before, but you, you really have an, your own style that really hasn't been developed yet or, or isn't world known yet. Isn't that true? That's true. I've got a lot of my uh, stuff in private collections, and uh, it's kind of an odd thing. Michael, Michael Waterman has a lot, but people don't brag about it because they want to keep uh, my paintings to themselves and not tell everybody to go out and yeah. buy them so that they're yeah. more valuable, I guess, when I'm dead and gone. But Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to see you go, but I have like five of your paintings hanging in my house. I gave one each to my kids because I, I love your work. You know, I, it's, it's great. I love that angel. For your yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic. Yep. Um, I like them all. But. They were great. And uh, one of the other things, now that you mentioned uh, some of the objects you painted on, didn't I see one of your objects in Angler's Life? Angler's Life is a book that comes out, like in anything, if you collect baseball cards, there'll be the book that comes out on baseball cards, or if you collect China. Yep. Uh, Angler's Choice happens to be a, a book that came out, and everything in it is the premier, top-of-the-line, world-class fishing mm -hmm. memorabilia. Yep. And yeah, That's I have... That's quite a uh, compliment. Yeah, I'm in there twice. It's uh, all the best of fishing memorabilia, but I faked a couple of pieces and made it into the book. <laughs> and when you fake some things, it isn't good. You're not doing money, are you? Big, no, <laughs> I'm not. But the, the thing is, uh, for the example, the piece you saw, the, uh, the Creole, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, ba basically a metal uh, fishing Creole, it's probably a $400 piece in, uh, at auction anywhere in the country. But this particular owner, it had great patina. It was metal, had a leather strap. He wanted to turn it into a $3,500, $4,000 piece. Yep. Woman happened to be very popular right now in fishing. It was 1940s. So to get back to where you say where I get my inspiration, I had to go back and see how they painted in the 40s. Wow. And a lot of your masters from yep. field and stream yep. apply that, plus throw in a woman, because mm -hmm. woman in fishing right now is very, very popular. Mm -hmm. So I hit them both ways, a left and a right. I yep. put a woman and a man catching mm -hmm. a trout. Yep. threw it on the box without touching the patina and adding it, painting it in the era that it was painted, in the style it was painted, and add the patina to the yep. piece to make it look authentic. Yep. One of the things that I was amazed at, and, and the night that you took uh, me into the Portland Art Museum, was there was a Picasso there. And I think a lot of, I didn't realize that Picasso did what you said, you know, start in the early ages doing the, the simple things and the, the, the standard type of painting. And then once they get known for that, what they really get famous for is they graduate into the abstracts like you have and other uh, things. I mean, I have heard it all my life. Oh, I could do that. They see a Picasso or they see a uh, whatever. Oh, I could right. do that. I could throw paint. Well, listen. Picasso could draw flowers and paint flowers better or as well as anybody I've ever seen. He mm -hmm. could do portraits as well as he could, his portraits could stand up with anybody's. He just didn't get tired of it to, to get his excitement. He went, took it a step further. He was a pioneer yeah. and he created cubism wow. basically. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's easy to say like you hear a guitar player up, wing, wing. you know, it's funny. Um, because I was in the music business also for quite a few years, people pick up a paintbrush and they think they can just paint what they want without knowing the basics. You can't just go pick up a guitar and get on stage and start right. playing. You've right. got to take lessons. I'm amazed by watching. I, I mean, this isn't the first time I've watched you paint. And I, I mean, your talent is unbelievable. I, I just, 
I mean, I can't draw a stick figure, and I'm just amazed. At, I mean, it's a God-given talent. It all gets back to basics. Primitives are, are strange because people inherently had the ability to paint. They didn't, may not have known perspective, hadn't been able to go to school, mm -hmm. but they inherently had a knack for painting, just like someone could pick up a guitar and learn by right. ear. It might take them longer. Sure. Uh, there, there, that's, it's not the exception to the rule, but in painting, ironically, what got in my way on the primitives was that I was trained, basically. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to realize, ooh, that side of that house shouldn't have perspective in it. The side over here that I painted mm -hmm. shouldn't have perspective mm -hmm. in it. They didn't in the primitive mm -hmm. arts. Jim, let me ask you this. What, would, what kind of advice would you have for any upcoming in, uh, aspiring artist? Do you have any kind of information that might help them? Or? Probably pretty boring, and they've heard it a hundred times. And I'm glad I was lucky enough to grow up in a school system that had a, a really advanced art program. Yep. Uh, I would say that not only in school system. Yes, yep. big time. And uh, yeah, I gotta, it's like anything. If you want to play ball, you got to practice, 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 and learn the basics. Nobody's going to hand them to you. If you want to play guitar, you got to take your lessons. So you want to do basics, art, you got to learn the basics. I'm sorry. Yep. And then you'll have a ball, and they're fun. Yeah. And it's enlightening. Yeah. And not only is it enlightening for yourself, it's enlightening for others that uh, don't uh, have the ability to paint or any, they don't want to paint, yeah. you know, to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, Jim, I want to thank you today for letting us come in and watch you do this painting and uh, give us some information about the uh, art community and uh, some information about yourself. It's uh, really, I'm really amazed at what you can do because I know that I couldn't do this. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that when people see your work, they're really going to appreciate it as much as I do and my friends have too. Paul, it's been a pleasure. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. Hey. Appreciate you sharing your time with us. Okay, buddy, anytime. Okay. All right, bye.